I'm Pete Devine. I'm the Education Coordinator for the Yosemite Association here in Yosemite National Park on a uh, nice wintry day with snowfall. Uh, you can hear Yosemite Falls in the background just off to my right and the Merced River very popular with many people in the summertime is a great place to, uh, to splash and play and float on a raft. But right now it looks more like part of an Ansel Adams photograph where our winter world of Yosemite is done in black and white. Very different from the summertime. We just come here every year. We have a couple snow fights. We go down the hill a couple times. And <coughs> it's just fun. I just go fast, man. I just go like zoom. You see the cars come up and they're loaded with sleds and the kids have their snow suits on and their snow boots and they're so excited to just come and see snow. And for a lot of people that come up here, this is their first time ever seeing snow. And so it's great to have those people into the park um, when they're prepared to drive in the snowy mountains. You know, cars slide around out here and that's what we're trying to prevent with the chains. So we're en route to Badger Pass Ski Area, which is a downhill ski area within Yosemite National Park. And so this is the road in the winter time where I get called to respond to the majority of motor vehicle collisions. Today we're expecting four to seven inches of snow. And uh, tomorrow morning, two to three feet of snow above 6,000 feet. So we're expecting to see a significant amount of snowfall. People are on vacation. They've had these vacations planned for months. And uh, especially when one of their goals is to go skiing in Yosemite, they tend to come whether the roads are good or bad. We're at uh, Badger Pass Ski Area, the oldest ski area in the state of California. And uh, we're heading up the lift right now to go check out the snow. When you see people come up who've never seen snow before and they get up here and there's snow caked on all the trees like we have right now, there's just some, something about that that moves people and changes something inside them. I know, you know, snow's been a major part of my life since I grew up here. Grew up, learned to ski at Badger Pass when I was five and have been here ever since. And um, yeah, this place is just, it rules when there's snow on it. We can get amazing amounts of snow overnight. Uh, it wouldn't be uncommon to have uh, two to four feet of snow fall in uh, a 24-hour time period. So that's one of the great things about this year. We do get a lot of a lot of snow, but we also get great weather following it. As today is a great example. Only two days ago, we had one and a half to two feet of snow, and now today is a perfect warm spring day here in the Sierras. We get all our precipitation in the winter, virtually all of it. Summer is dry for five or six months. What allows agriculture to go on, what allows the wildlife to survive, what allows people to get a continuous water supply is the fact that, that water slowly melts off the mountains and gets down to the farms and the cities. And winters when we only get a few of those storms, it's going to be a dry summer. Uh, it's going to be tough on the farmers. And years when we, we get a lot of those storms, then we're, we're fat, we're better off. So what that means is our entire snowpack might consist of three to five storms in a winter. And so the difference of one storm or not uh, makes a significant difference in the available snowpack uh, for all the processes that depend on it. The Sierra Nevada supplies 50% of California's water supply. And therefore, the state has made a considerable investment in tracking the snowpack in the Sierra Nevada. We may have a 20 foot snowpack or 30 foot snowpack in some parts of the Sierra. And not only is it amazingly deep, but it's amazingly wet. So in a, in a wet year, we may have 10 feet of water sitting on the ground in the snowpack, which when you multiply that over the entire range is an enormous amount of water. And 90, excellent. So the main thing we're interested in here is how much water is in the snowpack. 
And the way we find that out is to weigh it. And uh, this tube is cleverly calibrated, so we don't have to do any math to do that. Folks who are operating the dams use this data to determine how they're going to manage their dam. If they know how much water is going to be coming later in the year, they can make better decisions about how much water released now versus later. Uh, it's used legally to divide up the water. How much water are the salmon going to get? How much water are the farmers going to get? How much water are the cities going to get? That's based in part on these measurements. These records that we're collecting out here, this data is being used in part to see how the climate's changing. And in fact, we can now see that the snowpack is melting off earlier in the year. We're not getting as much snow lower down that is forecast to continue. And if it does continue, the state is going to be in worse and worse shape because essentially the size of this reservoir is shrinking. And the length of time that it, this reservoir is holding the water is getting shorter and shorter. Last year, we were at about the same level of, of snowpack and we had a historically dry year, the, one of the, the driest springs on record because snow basically stopped. And so what we're waiting for right now is we're at the same critical juncture. Will we get more snow after this point or not? And that will determine uh, what this water year is like for the state of California. Think about most of the people who are here in California, they live uh, down around sea level. So for them, uh, the whole idea of snow, it's just something so foreign to them. And they do, they get up here and they get all giddy and the first thing they want to do is pack a snowball together and throw it at their friend and then they want to build a snowman. And, and then the next step is to, uh, well, we can slide on this. How about we go tubing or go skiing or snowboarding? So, you know, just for a lot of people, it is just a novelty. I enjoy the, the freedom of getting around on a winter landscape, particularly with skis. In the forest, there's a lot of down trees. It's often difficult to go cross country. Uh, and that changes completely in the winter. A lot of the magic for me of the wintertime is just how amazing it is to slide down hills, being able to control yourself, get where you're going, but just have a blast while you're doing it. It's a great way to travel through the woods. We do a snow survey in the north end of the park. It takes four days. We ski and hike up close to 50 miles. I've done that survey a whole lot of times and we've never seen a visitor out there. We've got the place to ourselves and it's gorgeous. It's like another Yosemite. There's Yosemite and then there's Yosemite in winter. It's a different national park and a different experience to get out and explore it in the snow.